Hello everyone, what's up? Chris from ProFlight Trainer. I'm super excited. Today I got a new box and uh, many people have been asking us what does it actually take to assemble a ProFlight Trainer Puma? Do we need special skills? How long does it take? What's the difference between RTF and PAS? as ready to fly or pre-assembled. Is the pre-assembling procedures pretty complex or is it straightforward? So, uh, I'm actually, at a disclaimer, I partnering with ProFlight Trainer, I'm a commercial helicopter pilot and I test fly their products, take part in the design and help uh, to, uh, to get everything correctly and as close as possible to the real flight feeling that I usually have on my job. So today we're going to look at unpacking and assembling the Puma and uh, there we go. There's the box you get. It's pretty small. It's about six kilo, six, seven kilo usually. There's the label, Pro Flight Trainer Puma, serial number. Yeah, looks pretty nice. And then when you open the box, you'll get a lot of protection, very well packing. A little box usually have the USB cable, and usually with that box you get a CD with all this uh, instruction to assemble the product, and you also get printed version just for the short version of the assembling procedures. I did a got one. Uh, for some reason, I know the product by by uh, heart, so I didn't really need any. Say so why did put they didn't put any in the box? So you can see everything is very well attached, very well protected. Even if the box would get a, a lot of hits like this or like this, nothing would even touch the controls. Everything is bound and protected. Great work. And then you need uh, something strong. Just cut those guys. There you go, one, two, three. Cyclic grip, curved BH grip to be accurate. And then you have a lot of bubble protection everywhere, make it very safe. And very good. We ship worldwide and in many or many countries, the shipping service are pretty rough so so we want to make sure that the device will actually come in a perfect shape okay there's more bubble wrapping here there you go the easiest way is just find a place where it glues together and then pull it apart Looking nice. Extendo wires. This is actually uh, aviation grade extendo that we use to protect the wires. And then you can see the plugs. They're all marked, numbered to make it easy to connect to the board. There's three wires coming from the grip because there's lots of buttons. And there you go. Wow. Beautiful high quality B8 grip, Chinese hat, all the buttons perfectly fits in my hands. Wonderful. So that's pretty much what you do for all the parts that you get all the parts out. And I'm going to do that quickly. <laughs>
All right, there you go. We got all the parts ready to ramble. Collective mixer assy, cyclic grip, pedals, adjustable collective arm, throttle, throttle grip. Where is the zone switch button? There's the USB black box adapter for the frame, pedal pieces. Everything's there. Let's get going. There you go, those are all the parts. As you can see, everything is here. I have taken the freedom to put the screws in order that will help me to the building procedure when it says shorter screw, longer screw. I have everything in place. Those are the two tools packed with the Profile Trainer Puma, the seven wrench and hex key. I'm a bit of a lazy guy, so I'm going to swap that guy and pull something else. This. Just make it easier, faster, if you have one. I think it's fine to use it, but you can do all of it with this. I probably will need this for a couple places. So you have first, this is the bottom base stabilization stabilization bar this is the anti anti slide bar this is for the collective comes together with this guy this is for collective arm cyclic assy collective with a feather for a smoother ride and uh, adjustable frictions, total twist grip, buttons, momentary buttons, zone switch buttons, pedals, push pull pedals, and a couple holes to adapt length, the grip, everything is here. Very good. Let's get started. I'm just going to move that away, make some space a little bit, and then I'll get started right away. All right, I think we're ready to go. On the left side, I have my screen. I downloaded the PDF of the manual, so it would be easier for me to follow the manual. Uh, again, as I said before, if you get the Puma shipped to your door, you'll get the, the chapter that talks about assembling printed, so you don't have to worry about internet connection or anything. You can get going right away. All right, let's say what it says. Attach two pedal tube covers with four M5 screw, two screw each side. All right, so I'll grab the pedal assy. Made it of space here. And then first tube will go here. The screws are already on the pedal, that's great means I don't have to worry about the length of the screws or anything get lost. I'm just gonna remove those guys. And then one tube. Two. And then the other side, one, two, and I'm just, I'm not going to over tight, just slightly tight. All 
All right. Wonderful. It's looking great. What's next? Attach seat holder plate and bottom base tube to rear or pedal frame. Don't tighten the screw. You need to slightly adjust position while attaching the next part. Okay. So, according to the picture, this guy will come like this. That's the screw. Okay. Okay, here's the trick. The best way to do it that I found is you put your wrench, the key, I mean the key, first in to hold the screw and then untie the nut. There you go. And then get that get it through. And see how my hand is still holding on that on that guy. There you go. And nut. And the other one, same way. So, that's good for now. It's said not to tighten, so I'm not going to tighten anything. And this one goes the other way around, like this. And there you go. I'm not tightening anything. The tools are on the right side, parts on the left. Sorry, I'm a bit of a mess. Next, the seat holder screw is attached the regular way. Okay, we got that. Attach the base west, don't tighten the screw. Okay, that's the guy. This guy has all the bolts for adjustment. And those are the bolts for the frame. So I'm just gonna go and it says M4 by 30. Those are all the M4 by 30 that I got. So, as it shows on the picture, screw is getting through like this. The nut is going on it. Done. Good. Next. Don't tighten. Okay. Now, cyclic assay with four screws, one on each base tube, each corner. Okay, that seems pretty straightforward. All right, so there we go. The beautiful cyclic assay. Uh, that's the way over it. Boom, wonderful. Great. So there's one potentiometer to the left, one potentiometer to the front. The bar goes nicely onto the legs. 4M30. And I'm going to get in here. One. There you go. Number two is coming. I'm not the best at this, at this. <laughs> but uh, it's better for the test, so if I would be like putting everything in in second, you wouldn't give a true representation of the skills you need or the time you need to put that guy together. Three, one more. Ah, can't wait to fly the guy. That's gonna be awesome. Wonderful. Right. Good. Next, attach base top with black box. With black box. With three screws. Okay. So this is the guy with the USB. The screws are on it. That's perfect. That's the way it comes. The two long screws will go through the cyclic assay and keep it nicely placed. I'm just going to remove, oh by the way, pay attention and there is something in our guide that says it. There is a spacer in here so you don't want to lose that when you attach uh, the nuts. So I'm just going to keep 
the screw on it. Oh, this nut is a bit tight. I'm just gonna untie it a little bit. There you go. Better. What about this one? That's quite tight too. I'm gonna untie it in a little bit. As you can see, I'm not cheating. I'm just unpacking as it is. No tricks. There you go. One, two. The way I found works really well. Just keep your thumb on the bar like this, and then push it through. First on the cyclic side. There you go. Sometimes wiggling it a little bit to get uh, the screw in. And then comes the nut. Maybe from the top. Yeah. Better. There's one, two, and they're talking about three screws. So what's the third screw supposed to be? M. Okay, M30. Yeah. Okay, M30. There you go. Same way as the other one. That's gonna be. Looks like it's. I'm halfway done and not even 10 minutes, or I don't know. Seems fast. This is, by the way, a great improvement from an assembling perspective over the Lynx and Fox frame. The Lynx had the square tube, and it, you would have a hard time to reach in with uh, your finger. So this is great. I love it. All right, what's next? Don't lose the plastic spacer. That's good. It's in there. Attach the seat support bar. Hex head from bottom is the easiest way. All right. Now, this is the trick. You got two screws here. So you remember I was saying the easiest way is to keep one in. Let's see if that works because how can I hold both with one key? I'm going to start um, in the middle section. Ah, could work. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn it. No, it doesn't work. Okay. But I can do this. And then I can hold the other one. I think you guys will come up with a better way to do that, but this is how I do it. It works. There must be a better way. Maybe somebody from the production team will, will send me a, a video with a better way to do this. <laughs> See? I'm even getting stuck because If you have a second, okay, there we go. If you have a second set of hex key, it's probably the easiest way. Okay, don't let go now. Ah. There you go. Okay, this is the thing. See, if you let go, the screw will get in the tube. Just open the cap, and then start again. Okay, there you go. Oh, okay. I see. I could have just removed one screw to completely. It's actually not that hard to put it on. Maybe I was scared for nothing. This one I'm just gonna tight a little bit. I just don't wanna let it go and, and fall somewhere. There you go. Okay. Very good. What's next? Tighten all bolts and screws. Un use a till that step. Pay attention not to over tight. Okay? Four screws from cyclic SE on pearl frame, one each corner. Let's do that. I'm gonna cheat a little bit here. This is this is what I like by the way at this frame. is metal. So you don't have to be scared that you will damage something. You can actually take it, hold it, turn it, 
go upside down, whatever helps you in the process. And maybe my my call my friends from production won't be happy if I put the video like that. That all customer will. <laughs> they're, maybe they're scared they will damage something. But I think it's built so strong that actually nothing can happen. There you go. There comes the lazy guy. Okay, there's two. What's the best way to get that one? Uh, maybe like this. Okay, yeah, much better. Looking good. You have to pay attention not to overtight, especially if you use a electric drill because you will damage the unit if you have a uh, like crazy torque on your drill four the next crew were from the base okay let's do this one first the, the one underneath good then two screws here. Oh, that's much better than the links. Very accessible. I like it. One full. Now, uh, these guys. Do I get in? No. See, that's the thing. For this one, you won't escape. The manual work. Not that big of a deal though. Okay. Oh no, there's one more and it's here. I think I did all of them. Four cyclic, two on collective, and then two on collectives to cyclic, one bottom screw, one here, and two for the pedal, eh, for the anti slide bar. Anti slide bar. Wow. By the way, look at these wonderful bearings. This feels so good. Oh man, love those pedals. Really, really, really love those pedals. All right, I'm gonna just pass those cable underneath here, like this and like this, just so that I have all the wires in one place. It's a bit easier to manage. Good? Good. What's next? Aha, uh -huh. cyclic. Cyclic grip just lightly tighten lightly tighten at first check to ensure cyclic is vertical then tighten. Okay. Seems pretty easy and straightforward. Let's see the screws actually stay on it. You don't have to change anything. And by the way, it's good if you don't do anything because uh, the wire and the screw are already set up for you to go straight in. So if you take them out, then you have to pay attention not to, to push on the wiring. So, oh, cool. You can adjust height. I'm gonna take the upper one first. I have a standard office chair. As long as you have a standard office chair, it's probably better to go for the upper position. There you go. Let's see. Is it straight? Somehow. Yeah. Pretty straight. Maybe that's two screw that you could do the tightening by hand. So you have a little bit more free hand to actually position the cyclic grip. As you can see, 
the grip is 30 degree off so that's perfect it's actually exactly like that the a star and the jet ranger has it too and, and probably most common helicopter i've flown had the grip off i mean if you ha if you are on a super long flight and you you have to pull the radio a lot it's so much more comfortable to have the the grip off Of angle. All right, look at this. It's like 20 minutes, and I'm almost done. Great. Okay. There you go. Cyclic grip is done. They show how to wire through. Okay, that's good. Yeah. You can really make any can't make any mistake in here okay this cable all right I see the recommendation for this cable is to go inside doesn't seem to make a huge difference to me but let's stick to the guy to the plan and let's stick to the manual so I'll have it everyone happy at production okay attach collective holder bottom to base one one washer per side okay so there you have the collective holder again you'll see that uh, there's multiple holes that you can use so you can adjust up and down as you need to and then those were the screw with the washers so I'm gonna get one ready and then I'm going to take this position for now. Okay, washer, nuts. And the other one. True. Oh, I really love the way they change from a square to a L shape so much better for uh, for the screwing thing okay I'm gonna go ahead and tighten those one yeah looks like I will scratch scratch something here so I'm just gonna do the opposite way. Now if you're super mega lazy like me, you will have something like that. And then you'll grab number seven. Here we go. And there you go. That's just because I'm lazy. And then make it easier. Good. Right. Wonderful. Great. Oh, I really like this sticker. I'm sorry, I say I like a lot, but I really like it. So I can't help saying I like it. Uh, attach collective SC nuts away from pilot's grid. Screw head on pilot side. Pilot side is this way. So screw head, that's the head, okay, I know you guys know, I'm just helping myself not to do a mistake, okay, good, and let's see, okay, you can see 
multiple adjustment possibilities here. So if you have, if you want to have your your zero position, let's say zero position collective further down, then you'll use the upper hole. And if you want to have a, a more like a up collective, that really depends on the helicopter you're flying. If you're flying a 22, for example, your collective low position will be almost flat. Uh, the A star I fly regularly has a collective up position even if it's on zero etc etc so that depends which helicopter you want to fly I'm gonna choose this set of screw for now no actually I'm gonna go for the middle one to have the collective a bit closer one washer each side there you go next one and there you go so you can see now um, in this example if you use the lower the upper the upper hole your position your collective position will be pretty low and the max is about at 30 degree so because the A star has a bit of a different position I'm gonna go ahead and change that there you go I like that better flat to a high high angle that's pretty much what it is in the, in the A star alright screws on let's tighten that I love the fact that there's not 7,000 different type of screws. I mean, most of the screws were uh, M4 by 30. Some had washers on. It's pretty easy to identify. You don't have to scratch your head and ask yourself which screw and what I'm supposed to do. It's pretty clear. And okay. Now on the manual I have pictures showing that I can use these guys to make the wiring a bit cleaner. That's nice. So I'm go I'm gonna go ahead, grab the cables and just safety kind of velcro. Nice. Same behind here okay very nice and all right there's two two holes there's two holes in the collective arm that you can use and then you can for example for instance you can just get through it and attach it like this straightforward you can do it a second time and that's pretty much it alright that's it for um, assembling all that's left is plugging into the USB board playing all the wires using in the USB board. I'm gonna do that right away because I'm very eager to test it. I don't want to spend any minutes waiting. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the cover. There's two nuts. Good. And there you go. The board. Today's ProFlightTrainer.com, revision 1.1, USB, and actually all the position for every cable is marked. So if you look on the right here, for example, for the buttons, you have cable 6, 7, 8, 9. In here, you have buttons cable... Where's the number? Oh, the number is underneath. So 10. Obviously, it can't be the same. And then 
here. Okay, you have the A1, A2, A3 axis, A4 axis, I guess. Nine, no, it's not, I'm sorry, it's, it says 91, 92, 93, till 95, and it says axis here. Okay, nice, wonderful. It's great because uh, I remember on the first boards they, they, there were no there were no marking so you had to follow numbers but you didn't really know which cable you had to check the marking so then the numbering the numbering helps a lot and also I've seen I see three jumpers on those axes here those are three additional axes that you could use for anything any self-built trim whatever potentiometer could be plugged in here so that's great very good. Okay, I'll go ahead and start uh, plug it in. The manual says that the easiest way is to pass the wiring behind the board. So I'm just going to pass each wire one by one behind the board, like that. There's one. Actually, I could have wait with uh, before safety strapping the wires. There's a red dot and a blue dot for six and seven maybe that's for quality testing reasons okay four good haven't found the perfect spot oh, maybe like this no, it's too much. I guess I'm gonna hold it. All right. One, two, three, four, five. Zero, 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 one, zero, two, nine. Well, let's see. What do we have here? We have number three. Zero, one, zero, two. Zero, 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 one, and zero, two are marked blue and white. This is number three. It's an axis. Nine in five is red is a button. One. There's number one. Then it says here black, red, white. Black, red, white. So black black is going all the way down. There's number one. Number two, there you have to pay attention not to um, to move it too much up or down so that all three pins will be equally plugged in because if you if you misplace one like this you'll notice it, it's not flat and of course it won't work it shouldn't damage the unit I don't think it damaged the unit but it's probably not the best then this is of course the triple comes from the cyclic so this one must be pedal number four so there must be number three coming from the collective somewhere five that's throttle there you go number three for collective axis then number four from pedals black on the way down very important Number five, I think what will happen if you have the black and white re, uh, reversed, the axis will still work until we, it will be reversed in uh, under Windows or any, any other thing. All right, number nine is coming here. And there you have it, black, red, white. So black, red, white. Number nine, where's number eight? Is the cyclic grip eight seven six? Okay, eight seven. So eight seven. And six. Good. 
All right. Very good. What else? These guys. So I have zero one, zero zero, and zero two. Zero one and zero two, zero zero is on this guy here. Black on top, as usual. And then zero one and zero two are in the middle. Black is on the lower side. Okay, zero one. Zero two. Okay, there you go. Everything is plugged in. Everything is plugged in, and uh, all I need to do now is actually test the unit. So, USB cable. It's a long, it's a lo very long USB cable. That's very good if your computer is is somehow uh, behind a long table or something. It's much more freedom. There you go. I'm gonna plug that guy in. Dun dun dun. Wonderful. All I have to do is check the axis. There's a blue LED confirming that the unit is powered. And uh, sorry about that. Uh, we're good to go. Done. So that was about roughly 35 minutes. But of course, I lost some time talking in the process. And uh, that's it.